Welcome to Accru Hackers YouTube channel. This video is only for educational purposes if anyone use this for illegal activities we are not responsible for that. So today we are going to discuss about an overview about hacking. We all are interested in hacking right, so that is the reason for you all are watching our channel. So, shall we start? What is hacking? Hacking refers to activities that seek to compromise digital devices, such as computers, smartphones, tablets, and even entire networks. Hacking is identifying and exploiting weaknesses in computer systems and or computer networks. Cybercrime is committing a crime with the aid of computers and information technology infrastructure. Ethical hacking is about improving the security of computer systems and or computer networks. It means that one person is attack and gain the access or find the vulnerability or bug with or without the authorized person permission. There are a lot of reason for hacking. Based on the reason of hacking we can classify the hackers mainly into three types. White hat hackers. Black hat hackers. Gray hat hackers. So, we can go through each classification. Simply we can say A. White hat hackers are also known as ethical hackers. They never intend to harm a system, rather they try to find out weaknesses in a computer or a network system as a part of penetration testing and vulnerability assessments. A white hat has permission to engage the targets and to compromise them within the prescribed rules of engagement. So a white hat hackers are ethical. Next is black hat hackers. A black hat hackers, also known as crackers, are those who hack in order to gain unauthorized access to a system and harm its operations or steal sensitive information. Black hat hacking is always illegal because of its bad intent which includes stealing corporate data, violating privacy, damaging the system, blocking network communication, etc. The black hat hacker does not have any permission or authority to compromise their targets. They try to inflict damage by compromising security systems, altering functions of websites and networks, or shutting down systems. They often do so to steal or gain access to passwords, financial information, and other personal data. So a black hat hackers are not an ethical hackers. Then what about gray hat hackers, maybe some of you can guess. Gray hat hackers are a blend of both black hat and white hat hackers. They act without malicious intent but for their fun, they exploit a security weakness in a computer system or network without the owner's permission or knowledge. Their intent is to bring the weakness to the attention of the owners and getting appreciation or a little bounty from the owners. Usually, gray hat hackers surf the net and hack into computer systems to notify the administrator or the owner that their system or network contains one or more vulnerabilities that must be fixed immediately. So I think you got a small idea about different classifications about hackers. There are a lot of other classifications are there, but this three is the major one, that you will understand later. So now we can go to the main area about hackers. Do you know what is the main area of a hacker? Attacking. So we can just look on the different types of attacks. SQL injection attacks. Cross-site scripting, XSS. Denial of service, DOS or DDoS. Cross-site request forgery, CSRF or XSRF. DNS spoofing, DNS cache poisoning. Remote Code Execution, RCE Phishing The above attacks are more popular attacks and lot of other attacking methods are also available, that is also you will learn once you are become a pentester or a hacker. One of the major attacking methods is SQL injection. SQL injection attack is the most common website hacking technique. Most websites use structured query language, SQL, to interact with databases. SQL allows the website to create, retrieve, update, and delete database records. It used for everything from logging a user into the website to storing details of an e-commerce transaction. Web applications and websites that are poorly coded are prone to SQL injection attacks because these web-based applications contain user input fields, such as search and login pages, product and support request forms, comments section, etc., that are vulnerable and can be easily hacked by manipulating the codes. Next one is XSS. XSS is the short form of the cross-site scripting and as like the name it's a JavaScript based attack. Cross-site scripting is a major vulnerability that is often exploited by hackers for website hacking. It is one of the more difficult vulnerabilities to deal with because of the way it works. Some of the largest websites in the world have dealt with successful XSS attacks including Microsoft and Google. Next one is DOS or DDoS attack. Mamie with this name is familiar with you because some days back all the newspapers contain this attack name. So what is DOS or DDoS? A denial of service attack floods a website with a huge amount of internet traffic, 
causing its servers to become overwhelmed and crash. Most DDoS attacks are carried out using computers that have been compromised with malware. The owners of infected computers may not even be aware that their machine is sending requests for data to your website. Simply we can understand that a heavy traffic create to a website and try to down the server. That's all. So next one is CSRF or XSRF. CSRF attack is the short form of cross-site request forgery. Cross-site request forgery is a common malicious exploit of websites. It occurs when unauthorized commands are transmitted from a user that a web application trusts. The user is usually logged into the website, so they have a higher level of privileges, allowing the hacker to transfer funds, obtain account information or gain access to sensitive information. So next one is DNS spoofing. This hacking technique injects corrupt domain system data into a DNS resolver's cache to redirect where a website's traffic is sent. It is often used to send traffic from legitimate websites to malicious websites that contain malware. DNS spoofing can also be used to gather information about the traffic being diverted. The best techniques for preventing DNS spoofing is to set short TTL times and regularly clear the DNS caches of local machines. Next one is RCE. Means Remote Code Execution. Remote code execution can be best described as an action which involves an attacker executing code remotely using system vulnerabilities. Such code can run from a remote server, which means that the attack can originate from anywhere around the world giving the attacker access to the PC. Once a hacker gains access to a system, they'll be able to make changes within the target computer. The attacker leverages the user's admin privileges to allow them to execute code and make further changes to the computer. It's often the case that such user privileges become elevated. Attackers usually look to gain further control on the system they already have a grip on and look to exert control onto other computers on the same network. Next one is phishing. Phishing is actually a social engineering method for attacking. In some cases, the greatest weakness in a website security system is the people that use it. Social engineering seeks to exploit this weakness. A hacker will convince a website user or administrator to divulge some useful information that helps them exploit the website. Users of a website are sent fraudulent emails that look like they have come from the website. The user is asked to divulge some information, such as their login details or personal information. The hacker can use this information to compromise the website. Finally we can check what is a browser. A web browser, or simply browser, is an application used to access and view websites. Common web browsers include Microsoft Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, and Apple Safari. The primary function of a web browser is to render HTML, the code used to design or mark up web pages. Each time a browser loads a web page, it processes the HTML, which may include text, links, and references to images and other items, such as cascading style sheets and JavaScript functions. The browser processes these items, then renders them in the browser window. So meet you on next video.